As we look at the Android development environment, initially it'll look very similar. Right, we start out using Eclipse. Right, Eclipse is our IDE, so it's very much parallel to using Visual Studio. And of course, we're going to work on an app. But a couple things start to get different very quickly. Right? One thing is that, well, your IDE is running on your desktop or laptop. Um, it's probably, in our case, it's a Windows desktop or laptop. It could be Linux or Mac, but for most of it, it's probably Windows. And the app is over running on either a device or a virtual device. Right? Now, those are physically separate environments, but they're also just architecturally very different environments. Right? Uh, Linux, excuse me, uh, Android is a Linux-based platform. Right? It's a Unix-based platform. And it's also optimized to run on a small device. So whether it's a physical device or a virtual device, it's a very different environment. And they are physically separated. Right? In the case of a, a real device, you're connected by a USB cord. In a virtual device, you're connected by some software simulation of that. But it's very, very disconnected. So the experience of doing the development has to change somewhat. Also, it's important to remember that Android is designed in such a way to not be tied to any one development environment. Eclipse is kind of the preferred way to do it. But people use lots of different editors to do this stuff, uh, lots of different environments, lots of different operating systems. I mean, you literally could work in Notepad and the DOS command line, right, or the Windows command line to do all your development. So the tools are really built around this flexibility and not being tied to a single development environment. So that, that idea changes the way things come together. So what happens now is that because we're talking about a physically separated environment, there's something called the Android Debug Bridge, or better known as ADB. Right? In the AD, there's an ADB daemon running on the device. Right? Daemon is just a name for a background process. Right? And then on your desktop, you're going to have an ADB server. It's a server process, and it's responsible for managing the communication between the devices. So pretty much everything we do from a development standpoint is walking through that bridge with the ADB server on your desktop over to the ADB daemon on the device. So now what happens is when you want to do something like debug the application, well, the debug interaction with the processor, with the app, happens on the device from the ADB daemon, that communicates through the pipeline and it connects you up to Eclipse. Now, the actual debugging, the actual Java-based debugging, uh, uses a standard protocol called the Java Debug Wire Protocol. It's a standard mechanism for debugging Java apps, and that allows Eclipse to easily work with that for debugging. But very quickly, our, the work we're doing needs to be more sophisticated than just simple debugging. Right? There's other things we want to think about. Something that's very important when doing mobile development is having a logging system, right? the ability to write messages out to see what's going on. In Android, that's called the Logcat system. Right? And so Logcat is just a subsystem that runs there on the, on the device, keeps track of log information about what's happening with the device itself, and applications can write information out there. So your app would write information to the Logcat. If you want to see that, you go through the ADB uh, subsystem, and that allows you to have a Logcat window inside of Eclipse that lets you read that logging information. We'll talk about a bunch about logging shortly because understanding how to use that environment is really important. Also, the ADB daemon running on the device or the emulator connects in closely with the system and so that it actually can interact with the operating system itself and in the case of the virtual devices, can even uh, interact with the virtual device's behavior and environment. So the ADB daemon is tied in very deeply on the device side. So what happens is a utility uh, we call DDMS that allows us to do things like monitor your application and what's going on there, but also you can issue commands into the operating system and into the emulators um, to control behavior and interact very closely with the system itself. Now, most of the work we do occurs through Eclipse or these embedded environments in Eclipse like Logcat and DDMS. But it turns out that the ADB system also has a command line utility where you can open up a window command... Uh, a Windows command platform, or command, excuse me, Windows command line, and issue commands from that to interact with the ADB system. So you see that it's a much more sophisticated system going on here to bring it together. Now, a key thing to think about, though, is that this is not intended to be intimidating. It's just so you have an understanding of what's going on. You'll see that once we go through the tools, you'll see a lot of the complexity starts to get hidden away for us, but it's really good to have a good picture of what's going on so you have a sense of how the tools are working. As I'm recording this course, Android is moving to a new and exciting time in terms of the IDE we use. Now, since Android's inception, Eclipse has always been the IDE endorsed by Google. 
Right? But the thing that's important to remember is that although it's been the endorsed development environment, it hasn't been the only available Google development environment. Now, there have been a number, but for, number of different ones, but for most of the life of Android, a company called JetBrains has offered a reasonably popular alternative. It was called IntelliJ IDE. Uh, IntelliJ is uh, uh, used by a lot of people for a lot of non-Microsoft environments, very popular in the Java world as well as some other uh, language environments. It has both a community edition and a pro edition. The community edition has always been free. Um, I've been a huge fan of IntelliJ as long as it's been around, basically, or at least as long as I've been aware of it. Um, in fact, all of my Android courses for Pluralsight are recorded using IntelliJ. The thing that's funny is that uh, a lot of us believe that IntelliJ is a much more productive way to create Android applications than Eclipse was, even though most people use Eclipse. It's always been the endorsed environment by Google. Well, at Google I.O. in 2013, which is May 2013, uh, in the keynote presentation for Google I.O., Google announced that they're uh, using a new IDE, or I should say they're endorsing a new IDE as the preferred environment for Google, uh, Android development. That's called Android Studio. Android Studio is built on JetBrains IntelliJ IDE. So literally, it's a it's kind of specialization of the community edition of IntelliJ. So what that means is that although both of these environments will coexist uh, you know, probably forever. And even right now, as I'm recording this, Android, Android Studio is in 0.1 version, or I should say version 0.1. So it's not really fully prime time ready. Android Studio is the future. So Eclipse is really kind of, you know, going away. And I don't mean it's going to disappear altogether, but in terms of being the preferred environment, that time frame is in the ending. Android Studio is where we're heading now. Now, if we look at our overall tools architecture that we've talked about earlier, basically, the only thing that's really being affected in this is Eclipse. Basically, what's happening is that Eclipse is going away, and Android Studio is coming in and replacing it. So it'll be the place where we do all of our coding, our debugging, those sort of things. You'll notice one thing is that DDMS is not inside of Android Studio. So it's not actually enclosed inside of Android Studio as a view, or I should say as a... Um, perspective as it was in Eclipse. That's really kind of a minor issue. You can still launch DDMS directly from Android Studio. Your interaction with DDMS will be exactly the same. The only difference is, is that's a separate window from Android Studio instead of being an embedded window. But LogCat is still accessible inside of Android Studio. So really it's just Android Studio is the focus of where we do our development. All the rest of the tools are just as they were before.